Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thanks so much for watching today. I wanted to share my favorite makeup of 2022 with you, and today it's eyes and lips. So I recorded a different video for you featuring all of my favorite products for face, for cheek, for base, for that sort of stuff, and I will link it for you here in the eye as well as the description box down below. But just so you know, these are products that I, I tried for the first time this year. They may not be brand new. Some of them might be, but these are the ones that I tried and I fell in love with so much. I just reached for them over and over and over again. And I think that when I get to that point where I realize I'm subconsciously reaching for the same sorts of things over and over again, that's when I realize, oh yeah, this is not just good. This is kind of like risen to the top and it's like, one of my favorites. So there's going to be a lot of makeup that I tried this year that is not in this list. It doesn't mean it's not good and that I don't like it, but these are my favorites. I'm going to start with eyebrows. I didn't try that much new stuff for brows this year. I tried some stuff from Beauty Pie. I tried some drugstore things. Um, and I, I tried a couple of high-end things. One of the things that I tried early on this year that really impressed me was this. This is not new. This is the Brow Flick from Glossier, <laughs> but I love this. If you're unfamiliar with this product, it's a brush tip pen for your eyebrows. And it works very much the same way a brush tip eyeliner works. The harder you press, the thicker the line. If you draw tiny, thin little hair-like strokes, you will get the smallest of small little strokes. I love this pen so much. This is one of those that to me is fantastic. I get tiny little hair-like strokes, but on top of that, I also find that this spoolies beautifully. I start out by kind of taking it through my brows where I need it, and then I'll take a spoolie through it. As I brush through my brows, it kind of slightly softens the line. This is one of those products that lasts really well on me. I like the color, I think there are three shades. There's blonde, there's brown, and there's soft black, but I use brown, and it's a really pretty, slightly, cool leaning shade. It's not too warm. It's not too auburn, um, but I really like this. I like it so much. I have two that I haven't opened up yet. I buy them when I can get them at a discount or if I'm making another purchase from Glossier. I really, really like this. I like it so much it, it might actually have replaced my Anastasia Beverly Hills brow pen, which is one of my favorite brow products from last year. This is one that is new and I have a little, little beef with it, but it's this. This is the Gimme Brow Volumizing Pencil from Benefit. Now my beef is that there should be two caps, one on each end. The cap on this end broke <laughs> and will not stay on anymore, but that's okay, it's just the spoolie end. To me, the most important part is that the end that covers the pencil you know, stays on well. This is a pencil that you sharpen. And this pencil's formula is very different. I have so many of these little tiny micro pencils that you twist up. And I find those are really good about sticking to the skin because they have kind of like a little bit of waxy base to them. Not that they themselves are inherently like really waxy, but they stick to my skin in a different way. This is different. This is kind of more of a powder formula. On top of the fact that it's powdery, it has fibers in the pencil itself. This is the shade 3.5, I really like the shade. I am wearing this shade today with a little bit of the Glossier Brow Flick in there. But what I like about this is this also spoolies really well, but because it is kind of more a pencil with a little bit of powder in it, it actually looks really soft. If you prefer using a brush dipped in a powder, you'd really like this. When I sharpen it, this pencil stays at a firm point longer than I ever expected to. I really don't have to sharpen it that often. Once it gets really dull, it's like, okay, time to give it a little crank. But I can draw, like if I press harder, I can get more color, but I like using it where I get fine little strokes like this. And then when I spoolie through, it softens nicely but it doesn't completely go away. Do you see what happens here? This has just lightly been spoolied. I really like this pencil. And I think the reason I like this pencil is it reminds me of one of my favorite products ever for eyebrows that has been discontinued, but it was from Lancome. It was their Le Crayon Poudre, which was their 
powder pencil. <laughs> I loved it so much. I used to use the shade taupe all the time. It was my favorite. I bought it for more than a decade straight and it was my favorite brow product. I think it was the first brow product that I ever used and I was like, oh my goodness, I have eyebrows. <laughs> I was so excited. So when they discontinued it, I was like, no. And so I started using, you know, products like this, products like the brow pen, um, other sorts of things like fiber gels, which I really like a tinted fiber gel, but I'll tell you, I have reached for this Benefit pencil so much and for this brow flick so much, it has really changed the way I do my eyebrows. I think both of these products are fantastic. There's only one mascara that really captured my heart this year. I still have favorites that I reach for all the time. I still love my Lancome Monsieur Big. Um, I still love a lot of other mascaras, but the one that really kind of changed everything for me is this. This is the Smudge Stop from Hamish. Hamish is a Korean brand. This is my most trusted mascara these days. Um, this is a tubing formula. So this doesn't come off unless you take it off with warm water. So all it needs is warm water at the end of the day and it just slides right off my lashes. So I don't get any flaking. I don't get any smudging. There's no transfer. This goes on and as long as I don't sneeze while I'm doing it, it stays exactly on my lashes and then at the end of the day comes off so easily with water. It has really reduced the amount of time I used to spend kind of just like doing this with a biphase eye makeup remover or with a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil. And I still do like to double cleanse, but this has really taken my cleansing routine, it shortened it. I don't have to spend as much time like worrying about getting this off. Now, I trust this and only this for the days that I am working. I work at a dentist's office and as a dental assistant, I'm spending a lot of time looking down over a patient and my lashes are up and they're touching right here. And if I were to wear a traditional mascara, a non-tubing formula, I find that because I do always have a little bit of skincare on my lids to keep them hydrated, the mixture of hydrating skincare plus mascara and then prolonged contact with my lashes just curling right up, boop, hitting right there, I end up with little black or gray dots. I don't like that. Um, and sometimes after a long day, I will find some smudging below. So I really love a tubing formula. I've been trying different ones. I've tried a lot of tubing formulas this year. One of my favorites from past years is the Pick Me Up Mascara from M Cosmetics, but I tried the one from Merit. I tried one from Maybelline. I, I've tried a lot of different ones. This one is my favorite this year, and this is the one that, this is my fourth tube? <laughs> fourth tube this year. That's how much I like it. I also got my oldest daughter hooked on it, and she loves it as well. So this is great. You can buy this online from a lot of K beauty retailers, but um, I get it at Oh Lolly and I really like being able to buy it here in the States and I don't have to wait, you know, several weeks to get it to ship from Korea. But this is one of my favorite mascaras and this is what I'm willing to jump through hoops to purchase, which says a lot. When I turned 40, I started having problems with my left eye leaking and I quit wearing eyeliner. I quit wearing a lot of eye makeup because I was like, oh, it just looks so sad. And, and I still have really watery eyes. And there are days that I can't stop my eye from watering and I'll get like a little bald patch right here where there's no concealer, no foundation, no powder, no eyeshadow, no eyeliner, nothing because I'm forever like just crying it away. But I finally got back into wearing eyeliner because for the longest time after I turned 40 with my leaky lift, I was like, eyeliner's not worth it. And I forgot how much I loved it. So in 2020, I just started playing with eyeliner because I was home all the time and I had all this time on my hands and I remembered how much I loved it. So my goal has been to find products that one are interesting in different colors because I'm a, a kind of boring kind of gal and I'm always going for like a deep brown. <laughs> brown is like, some people live and swear by black eyeliner. It's a little harsh on my fair skin. So for me, I'm always looking for like a deep espresso brown. And I found some really good liners this year, but the one that I cannot stop wearing is this. This is a gel liner from Inglot. This is their AMC liner. This comes in so many colors. Mine's all like, I've been in there a lot. <laughs> but this is shade number 90. And it's what I'm wearing today. It's very, very dark. It almost verges on black. And I like that it's not quite black, but so dark I can get a really beautiful line. The other thing that I like about this is that when I take an angled brush like this, this sort of detail brush, I can actually shove it up into 
in between my lashes and blank out the gaps that I have between my lashes. Because if I just line my upper lid and throw on mascara, there's a lot of little flush toned gaps between my lashes that all of a sudden you can see. And then on top of that, in the upper waterline, when this gets in there and it sets and it stays, it doesn't go anywhere. It also makes my lashes look that much longer because it blanks out that flesh toned upper waterline. It, it just kind of makes my eye look that much better. I love it, this is bulletproof, but this is one of those that does take a biphase eye makeup remover or a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil. Like this is one of the reasons I double cleanse, but she's so worth it. And, and this is not a new product. This has been around for such a long time. And I tried it for the first time this year and I was like, okay, I see why people are devoted to this. I love this AMC liner. The other two liners that I fell in love with are both pencil liners. One is from Danessa Myricks. This is the Infinite Chromes liner. <gasps> I'm worried I'm nearly out of this. This is such a fun color. I have the shade Amethyst, but it's a multi-chrome. It, it's purple, it's green, it's kind of golden. It's fantastic and it's so tiny. It's like the most minuscule little teeny tiny guy. It glides effortlessly. I love like shoving it in between my lashes and then dragging it across the upper uh, lash line. I have used this in the waterline. It's not really like super dark, but it does kind of get rid of some of those flesh tone gaps. But this is $22 and you, there's not a lot in here. <laughs> and I know I'm gonna run low, but when I do, I'm getting another. The other liner that has really impressed me is this one from Beauty Pie. Never remember the name, let me read it to you. It's the Ultra Color Pro Gel Eyeliner. I have this in bronze and I have this one here. This one is called Very Pretty Plum. And I, this is me trying to get outside of my comfort zone. So this is not really a brown, but it's a slightly metallic kind of berry shade. But I love this. This does an amazing job. When I get it super, super sharp, I can draw a little like kitten wing with it. And I get a little bit of precision and a, a nice little flick at the end. This is great. It glides really easily along my upper lash line. It glides really well inside my water line, upper water line, and I can really shove it in between my lashes and then it stays. This very pretty plum has been one of my favorites because I'm trying to get outside of always using a brown eyeliner. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with the brown eyeliner. Brown eyeliner is fabulous for me, but I like different colors and this one is fun. This is one that I have used on days when I'm only wearing liner and mascara. I'll do a little bit of a, you know, a thicker line with a little bit of a wing. And because it's kind of like this berry plum shade, it's got a little bit of interest without being too much. I really like these liners. There's a lot of eyeshadow. There's a lot. Let me just start off with the ones that are easy. These guys, these are the Liquid Lorex. Uh, Lisa Eldridge launched Liquid Lorexes last winter. I, I think, cause I think the first time I tried them, it was like December of 2021. And then um, I picked up three shades from the initial launch and I loved them. And then when she released new shades this fall, I picked up more and then I just picked up um, another round of them. I will link that video for you here. Um, but I love these. There are days that I need to get out the door. I don't have time to play, but I want to, I want to look a little bit, you know, more glamorous than I do. This is the one that I'm wearing today. This is one of the new ones that just was released. This is the shade Titania. And it's great because it comes in a doe foot applicator. You can swipe it on with the applicator, blend it out with your finger. This is way too much for the back of my hand, but you'll see how it blends. Look at that. You can have it a little bit more opaque. You can shear it out. There's no sparkle fallout from this. I don't know what sorcery is involved, but that's how I feel. Like it's magic because I can put this sparkle all over my lid and I can blend it out, tap it out with my fingers or take kind of like a fluffy-ish brush, something like this, and just kind of buff the edge. And then all of a sudden I have this beautiful, fabulous, like on my eyelids, until I take it off at the end of the day. It doesn't crease. There's no like little glitter, like globules below. It is just stunning. And so on the days that I gotta go, it takes me less time to put one of these on my lids and tap it out with my fingers than it does to put on mascara. And I'm, I'm pretty quick with mascara. I've been wearing mascara for 30, how many years of my life? For like a long time, decades. Um, but these are my most used shades. This new one, Titania, I can't stop reaching for it. This is a kind of a, a surprise for me. This is a really beautiful 
um, kind of cool brown. This one's called Zora. I know it's out of stock at the moment, but look at this. It has some silver sparkle in it. It's nice and deep and rich. And the minute you start kind of blending it out, I mean, it's so pretty. I love, I love. The other ones that to me are like constantly being reached for, this is a shade she released this fall. This one's called Emily. And it's kind of like a gold with a mix of silver, gold, and pink sparkle in it. I can't always see the pink, but I can see the silver and the gold, and it's so gorgeous. And another new one, this one I have used so much already. This is Cressida, and this is kind of like a pearl shade, but it is brilliant as an inner corner highlight. I wore this the other day all over the lid with just a little bit of my Inglot winged liner and that mascara from Hamish. I had so many people telling me how pretty my eye look was, but this is this right here is Cressida, and if I have it hit the light just right, it's fabulous. Look at, see that? There we go. That's what you get on your eye. Um, I've got it at a weird angle over here, but I love these. They take no time at all. Um, some of them tend to be more metallic. One of the other new shades, uh, the kind of like this berry shade here in Viola, this is more of a satin. It doesn't have the same metallic quality that some of these guys do. Um, and it's a little bit sheer, but it builds beautifully. They, they do have different finishes amongst this formula, but these four are my favorite. In February of this year, M Cosmetics released their Masterpiece Collection. It was literally one of the best things that I purchased this year because I have used it so much. One of the things that was released with that was another one of their Divine Skies eyeshadow palettes. Now, I love these palettes because they're six shades. They're very easily curated. The formula is beautiful for me. The mattes are beautiful. Uh, the foils are beautiful. They're not too intense. They're just enough. They don't need a primer. They last all day. They're amazing. And everyone comes in this same packaging, but the packaging is different color based on what it is. So if you get the one that's in Venetian Rose, it's more of a pinky tone. If you get the Faded Clementine, it's more of an orangey tone. But they are all in this beautiful packaging, um, but the outside color tells you exactly what you're getting. This is the lightest of the two new shades that they released this year in the Masterpiece Collection, and this is in the shade Rodin. And this is exactly what my neutral, everyday eyeshadow loving heart was wanting. And this is so perfect. It builds the most gorgeous, lovely, soft look. The formulas are just mm, And the colors are exactly what I was looking for in a neutral, everyday palette. This got used so much for work this year. Another palette that I picked up with six pans this year that really captured my heart and I have been so impressed with is this. It's not a new palette, but this Desert Lights from Flower Beauty really surprised me. This is one of those that a lot of people would think of as a companion palette. You know, what doesn't have any mattes, it only has a certain color story. You know what, I wear like one of these as a one and done all the time. My favorite thing about these is how absolutely stunning these metallics are. I mean, look at that. These look like like metal. Look at this. They're so metallic. They're they're going to blind you. They're just stunning. I love using these all over the eyes. Oh, these are so good. Now, you can use them in conjunction with a matte shadow uh, with something else. I love this formula so much that I picked up the Jungle Lights. And the Jungle Lights had shades that I normally don't use. And I don't use it as much as the, this one, which is why it's not in here with this. This feels like high-end makeup, like the formulation, the texture, the way they wear, like the, the, the pigmentation and the, the luster that you get from these. These are so gorgeous. They kind of remind me, if you happen to be into indie makeup, if you've ever tried the pressed pigments from Sydney Grace, they really remind me of this formula, but this is available at the drugstore. When Sephora had their spring sales event, a new eyeshadow palette was released that I was so curious about. And I didn't pick it up, so I was like, no, I'm gonna be a good girl, I'm not gonna do it. And then a couple of days later after the event was over, I walked into Sephora, because I happened to be at my local Sephora, which is like 70 minutes from my house. <laughs> and I saw it and I swatched it, I was like, you're mine, you're coming home with me. And I lamented that I didn't pick it up during the sale, but it was so good. I didn't care, I wanted it even at full price, and it's this. This is the Major Dimensions 2 Rose Palette from Patrick Ta. All right, you can see that mine have had a lot of use in these more metallic shades, but I'll tell you, 
This is one of those palettes that I lived in all through spring and summer. I love this palette. It's so much fun to reach for. It has different types of finishes in here because underneath this little window, Patrick is really known for mixing powders and creams. We have two cream eyeshadows here and I love that they're protected by this little kind of cover. And then we have a row of mattes and a row of metallics. And you can use these as an eyeshadow base. You can use them on their own. You can use them tapped over a powder shadow. They, like this whole thing works so seamlessly well together. I never got the original Major Dimensions eyeshadow palette, the more warm toned one, but this rose one just really drew me in. But this has been one of those that I reach for all year long. And to me, even now that it's not brand new, is still one of my favorite things. This has been fantastic. When this got released from Anastasia Beverly Hills this year, I was like, oh, thank goodness. Finally, we're coming back to a uh, kind of territory I'm familiar with. For the longest time, I used to love Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palettes. Um, they had a beautiful selection of colors and formulas. They were soft and so blendable, but they always came in kind of like this rectangular packaging and had a brush. I like that we have kind of changed things a little bit. Um, this new format here, no brush, but the pans are larger. I like that. And I really love this color story here in the Nouveau palette. Um, if I'm completely honest, this is how I use it. Everything but that kind of lavendery wisteria shade. I, I don't reach for that. And a lot of it is it's outside of my comfort zone. Another part of it is just like, to me, it makes more sense visually with these shades here. Warm, um, a little bit cool and there's kind of some grunginess to it but it's still really light. The reason I like this palette is most of these shades are kind of lighter or medium tones like this is as deep as we get but there's not a lot of darkness or depth in here and if you think back to the Soul Tree or um, the Soft Glam or the Modern Renaissance there were a lot of deeper colors and I really liked having those but I used them so infrequently because on my fair skin a lot of really dark shades. I, I use them as liner or just a little bit in the outer corner and I never really get into them. And what I really have been liking about Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes, especially this one, are these metallics. These metallics are just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. And these kind of lighter, almost um, slightly soft shades are perfect for me and my skin tone. I really love this and I really enjoy wearing it. When Sydney Grace had their Christmas in July sale this year, I decided to pick up something on a whim. <laughs> they were having a sale 40% off of all of their eyeshadow palettes that were in stock. There had been one that I'd been eyeing for so long and dithering in and out of the cart, in and out of the cart for months and months and months and I had never really picked it up. And when I pulled the trigger on it, I just fell in love and I wore it so much this summer. I did wear it again this fall, but the truth is I'm just barely getting back to the point with so many other new things in rotation that I'm like, you know what I wanna wear? I wanna wear this. This is the On The Horizons palette. It's a collaboration between Christine from Temptalia and Sydney Grace. And this beautiful palette, it's, it's gorgeous. The reason I didn't pick it up initially is like these blues and greens and purples over here. Like these shades are not in my comfort zone, but I fell in love with this palette. L look, at, look at that. It's like, <laughs> it's like it's so delicious. I love this. So Sydney Grace is probably my favorite eyeshadow brand. Affordable, excellent quality, like, the metallics are on a completely different level. Like when you look at these guys, they're just so rich. Now, there were three palettes that were curated by Christine uh, back at, I think at the tail end of 2021, was it the fall? And she, I love that Sydney Grace does something that nobody else does, is they make two versions of the palette. They'll do one, a lot of shades will stay the same, but then they'll take a shade like this or like this um, that, or like this, that is perfect for people with light to medium skin tones. And then for people with rich to deep skin tones, they will do an, a variation of these shades that are a little bit deeper, that won't look ashy. That actually means that there's a palette for everyone. The color story is the same, but those mid-tones get shifted based on what's great for the skin tone that you have. 
So this palette was a super surprise for me. I wore the purples, I wore the blues, I wore the greens, and I had so much fun doing it. Of course, I was pairing it with my um, Chrome's pencil from Danessa Myricks, but I wore this so much and loved this so much. This was a, a revelation to me, um, reminding myself that it's okay to step outside of my eyeshadow comfort zone, but when you do it with a trusted brand and a formula that you know, it's nothing but like, just like the best. Loved this. The last three palettes I have to share with you are on the smaller size. I'm gonna start with the smallest one first, and it's this. This is the Pettifore in the Lilas Du from Viseart. I have always loved this little four pan kind of format. I love that Viseart puts their pans into a palette where they're set in with magnets. You can take them out, rearrange them. If you have other palettes with pans this size, you can interchange them. I love that so much. But especially the fact that this little palette has everything I need for a look. I fell in love with these in the fall of 2020 when they released the Pedophores for the first time. Um, and I've always liked a smaller eyeshadow palette. I've always liked something that's a little bit more curated, has fewer options. You give me more than 10 to 12 options and I can get a little bit overwhelmed. So this little four pan palette is perfect for me. I fell in love with their original Lilas palette when it came out in 2020. It had more of a powdery gray and a lilac shade, and then a really beautiful deep pewter and a soft silver. And we're getting these two shades here are very similar to the original Lilas palette. And then they're pulling in this other warm metallic and this kind of dusty plum shade. Oh, I really have been enjoying this. I am so glad to have it. Um, but it fits in really nicely with the rest of the Pettifors in my collection, the rest of my Viseart eyeshadows. But I know I love the formula and for $25, it really is a fantastic small palette. The last two palettes I have for you are, I don't know, I just feel like all of a sudden they've become like something amazing and precious in my collection and I, I have to tell myself to wear other things. I'm talking about the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes. I have a full playlist of Lisa Eldridge products that includes not just these eyeshadows, but all the other things. I will link it for you here, as well as the description box down below. But when she debuted, she was coming out with eyeshadow palettes. I was over the moon. And all of my eye makeup today is Lisa Eldridge eyeshadows. I have a combination of the Liquid Lorex and this palette on. This is the Sorcery palette. This palette here, I wasn't sure I was going to get because look, it has like this vibrant blue. There's greens in here. I was like, I don't know what to do with blues and greens. Honestly, this helped me step outside of my comfort zone. I am not reaching for this blue on the regular, but I use everything else. Now I do use the blue, but I don't use it as much as everything else. The one shade in here that I'm head over heels for is this one right here. It's a duochrome. It looks very gold right here, but it can at times look lavender or even a little bit blue. And this one right here is the best. This is called Mercurial. This is the shade that I have kind of like tapped right over the top of everything else because it's so fun and it's so shifty. There, like if I could cover my whole face in this, I, would. <laughs> I love this shade. This shade is everything my um, magpie heart wants. I'm a bird going for all the shiny sparkly things and Mercurial is calling my name like caca, caca. Like this is the sort of thing that I love. And I love also that in this palette, you only get one matte. Everything else is metallic. Look at my fingers. I'm a mess. I'm going to try and swatch some of these for you so you can see what I'm talking about. But do you see these shades here? They are so lovely. So beautiful. I mean, even this swan song, this, I mean, they're all just fantastic. And they anchor it with one matte shade, kind of a matte teal. It's beautiful. I'm wearing this right here on the outer corner. I have several of these on the eye over the top of the Liquid Lurex in Titania. This is the palette that when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's so pretty, but that's not for me. But the truth is, I was like, okay, let's just try them all. Because I have never, ever, ever been unhappy with a purchase from Lisa Eldridge. I feel like she makes the sort of makeup I want to wear and creates the sort of looks that I aspire to. And I will tell you, this was one of the ones that worried me the most. And I've had the most joy 
reaching for this palette over and over again. Um, I have taken them all apart and made like my own little perfect palette. For this video, I put everything back together so you could see like this palette because normally some of these shades live other places, <laughs> but I love that. The other thing that's great is you'll notice that there are all these holes in the back. You can take a pin, push these out, replace one pan. Let's say you, you love Mercurial like I do and you get all the way to the bottom of it and you need a new one, you can buy a single and replace it. You don't have to get a whole new eyeshadow palette. The other thing is you can also push these out and rearrange them the same way you can with the Viseart and make your own custom eyeshadow palette if you have more than a handful of these. I love that so much about this. And again, like just, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The other one, there were five of them that were released all at the same time. The other one that I was like, uh, I don't know. I don't do that many smoky looks. I've leaned on this so much. It's like remarkable is this, this is the Vega palette. Now it hasn't been until the last couple of years that I have been falling in love with cool toned eyeshadows. For the longest time I was on the warm eyeshadow train or the neutral eyeshadow train where everything was soft browns and it was either warm or it was like right in the middle. The minute we started going into cool eyeshadow, I didn't know what to do my, with myself. I was like a little bit confused, but I'll tell you, this is the most beautiful, easy to use, elegant palette. Like it, even if you're afraid of cool shades, this is just amazing. All right, so there are quite a few mattes in here. There are four mattes in here. So it makes it really great for daily wear. It makes it really easy if you go to a job where you don't feel like you can wear a lot of like super sparkly or bright colors on your eyes. These sorts of palettes are perfect for something like that. And um, this shade here in French Gray and this one here in Moon Swirl are the two that I pair together the most. I'll use them for a two shadow look. Sometimes I'll pull in this shade here in Latin Black as liner. I love these so much. The best thing to do is probably just to link for you here uh, the video where I use this for an eyeshadow look because I used it on a day I was going to work. But I reach for this all the time. This is such a beautiful palette. Um, the one in Sorcery is kind of like my let's have some fun and you know, party look. And this is my mean business and get to work look. So I love both of these. I like all five of the ones that I got, but these are the two that are getting the most love right now. All I have left are lip products and I'm looking at what I have in my bin here. Oh, there's a few. Okay, I better get cracking because we'll be here all day if I don't. But here's where I tell you, lip products are my favorite thing. If I leave the house with no makeup on, I will always, 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 if nothing else, have at least a clear balm on my lips. My lips cannot be naked. I wear a sleeping mask to bed every night. Uh, when I'm done brushing my teeth in the morning, I put on a clear lip balm. Um, I'm always looking for um, lipstick, lip gloss, like something that's fun and different, but it needs to be hydrating and it needs to be comfortable. Those are like my mandates, must be. All right, so let me start with something that really surprised me this year. Um, this, I'm nearly done with it. I here, There you go, there you can see, like I have been scraping the sides. This is from L'Oreal, this is a gloss and I have, it's taken me a long time to find something that I really like at the drugstore. I know a lot of people like the lifter glosses from Maybelline, those are not my favorite, but this, this is beautiful. This is one of the Glow Paradise Gloss Balms and this is in the shade 40 Blissful Blush. Look at that. It's shiny, it's glossy, it's comfortable, it's actually nourishing. And I, you would think that that would be like, well, of course it is, it's a gloss. Not all glosses are. Some are just glossy, but some are glossy and hydrating at the same time, and that's what this is. This Glow Paradise line launched, and I really love this gloss. And when this gloss is done, because like we're getting there, I am getting me another one in this same shade. This is perfect for light makeup days, for no makeup days, for days when I have a really heavy eye look on and I need a light, hardly there lip, but a little something to anchor it. This has been a favorite, super, super comfortable. Um, another product that I fell in love with this year that I was like, what? So affordable and so fantastic is this. I wanna get more of these, but I need more lip products like I need another hole in my head. This is the Honest Tinted Lip Balm. I picked up the shade Blood Orange, and this is the sort of product that I keep stashed in my purse. It's very lightweight, it's glossy, it's comfortable. The more you layer it on, you can get more color from it. But this is the perfect thing for when you need a little something and you don't want too much. 
If you are kind of afraid of a brighter color, like this kind of orangey red, a sheer wash like this is a great way to do it. It's nourishing on the lips, it's super comfortable, and it's $9. Like, it's so good. I love this. This is one of those products that is in heavy rotation on my work day because I'm in a mask all day at the dentist. You know, pandemic's going to come and go and I will still be in a mask at work all day. So I don't want a mask, you know, getting in regular lipstick and as I'm talking to patients shifting around and I take it off and I have clown mouth. So a sheer lightweight but hydrating product is what I need because also the inside of that mask rubbing up against my lips can sometimes be irritating. This is the perfect sort of product. I love having this. This is forever in my scrubs pocket at work. All right, let's talk about another one that lives in my scrubs pocket at work, another affordable one from the drugstore, and it's this. This is the Gloss and Glow from Burt's Bees. I don't know right now where my other one is, and I'm just praying I didn't make it into the wash in a pocket, <laughs> but this is the shade Chai Time, and this is kind of like a glossy but sheer neutral color. The other shade that I have is Eat, Drink, and Be Cherry, and it is very similar to, um, oh, like the Black Honey from Clinique, that almost lipstick. It has a similar shade to that, but these are like six and a half dollars. You can get one of these um, at Ulta. You can pick these up wherever Burt's Bees are sold, but I love how hydrating. They're sheer, they're lightweight, they're a little bit of color, they're not too much. I don't need a mirror when I put these on. I have two of these really really like these a lot this one almost doesn't count because you know i've been wild about this product for years but this was a new flavor that got launched this year and i'm obsessed with it and i'm so sad it was limited edition because you can't get it anymore but this is balm.com from glossier in the shade swiss miss or flavor swiss miss and this smells like chocolate and it smells just like swiss miss just like i mean i literally made myself a cup of swiss miss hot chocolate and smelled this and smelled the hot chocolate, they smell exactly the same. But what I love about this is it is a beautiful, kind of um, sheer but beautiful brown shade. It's so wearable. I have one more tube of this color. This product has been in rotation nonstop. I haven't had it that long, maybe like five weeks now. And look at this. Okay, so I love balm.com so much. I have like four of them right here. <laughs> That's from a reason order. I think I still have three more in my like skincare closet <laughs> and I have open ones all over the house. The ones I habitually repurchase are the mango and the coconut. Um, but I did, every time they come out with a limited edition flavor, like last year they had a cookie butter, loved that one so much. I feel like it's mean of them to release wonderful flavors like cookie butter. And then it's like, well, if you didn't get one, you're never getting one. Um, same thing with a Swiss Miss, but I'll just tell you, this is one of my favorite products. I have open balm.coms all over the house, in the car, in my purse, at work, like all over. But this one in Swiss Miss has been one of my favorites and especially because the color is so good. I've always liked the lip cushion from M Cosmetics, but when they launched their Masterpiece collection this year, <gasps> so good. This is the shade Van Gogh and this is the shade Mona Lisa. I'm running out of places to swatch it, but they're right here. Here's Mona Lisa. And here is Van Gogh. Van Gogh is definitely more of a toasted color. It's more of your terracotta color. This is the sort of formula that I really love because it's very nourishing. Um, it, it does come in packaging where it only advances, so you can't click it up too far because then it's gonna get smushed in the cap. But these two neutral shades are everything my heart wants. They're comfortable, they're nourishing, they're sheer. They don't look that sheer here, but they're not like crazy pigment and when you have them on for a little bit and they start to kind of like wear down like they do like right here they're just so pretty they're just so pretty I love these and the minute either of these gets emptied I'm buying another one in this exact shade I do have one in a kind of berry shade called mystic and I like it I just don't reach for it these I'm forever like pulling out of a scrubs pocket or in my purse or you know by my bedside table um, these are fantastic I really really love these M launched a new lip product this year. This is kind of like the version of the liquid lipstick they wanted to release when they came out with their Infinite Lip Clouds years ago, but I don't think the technology was quite there for them to do what they wanted to do. But when they released these um, soft-spoken velvet lip creams, I was head over heels. But I was at work that day, so I missed the launch. 
I was at work at eight, they launched at nine. By the time I had took a lunch break, they were all sold out. But I was so grateful when they reached out to me and offered to send me these. So these were PR this year, but I'll tell you, this formula, I'm wearing one of these today. I'm wearing the one in Tender today. If you do not like lip products that are like a liquid lipstick that dry down and leave you dry and suck all the life out of your lips, you don't have to worry. That's not what this is. Um, this is a very different sort of product. It's kind of mousse-like, it's, it's creamy, it's actually so comfortable to wear. Um, I got two shades. I got, uh, this one here is a new one called Flutter. It's kind of like a electric strawberry shade. But what's great about this, first of all, is the applicator. The applicator is perfect for getting like a perfect line or for blurring things out. These are also fantastic. I'm wearing it kind of painted on full force today. But if you take the time to kind of softly blur these, these look amazing on the lips when they're like this. When they're, Not when they're like full force, but when they're kind of like softened out. They're nourishing, they're comfortable, they give beautiful color. They feel really good, and I wasn't sure that they would feel really good. They feel so good. If you like a liquid lipstick that is comfortable, you can reapply it over the top of itself if you're losing color kind of in the middle. These are comfortable, nourishing, soft, blurry. If you like a blurred lip, you would love these. These are so good. Another product that is very reminiscent of those is this. This is the Love Swipe from Kaja. This came in a holiday set that I got this year and I cannot stop wearing it. This is very similar because it's like that whipped formula. It's like a liquid lipstick. It comes on a doe foot. Um, but this is the shade called Adore You. It's shade number six. It's a little bit more of a mauve berry, but there's a lot of shades for this. I really like this soft and blurry formula. This is a little bit I think a little bit more matte. This has a little bit more of a shine to it, but this is so comfortable. And you can just endlessly apply when you feel like, you know what? I feel like my lips are getting a little bit dry. Like three hours later, you can just pull it out, swipe it on, you're good to go. Hydrating, comfortable, and it wears really, really well. I don't know. These are what I always wanted a liquid lipstick to be and never was, and now they make them. Mm, amazing. So I fell in love with Merit products this year, <laughs> big time, and it all started with this lipstick right here. I picked this up um, shortly after the spring sale from Sephora. This is their signature lightweight lipstick in the shade Baby. Now, this is the sort of lipstick that I wanna wear all the time. It's nourishing, it's comfortable, it's a cream, it glides, it has a little bit of shine, but it's not so shiny that it's like, you know, slippy and going everywhere. And it's the most beautiful pink leaning nude. It is stunning. I love, 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 love. And the packaging also, fantastic. So I loved this so much, I picked up another shade. This one is in a deeper kind of berry brown shade called Lavenue. This is one of those that I was thinking, you know, where was this in the 90s when everybody was wearing browns and deep berry colors? Where was something like this? This is one of those products that when you put it on, it is super comforting. It is super easy to swipe on. It's never too much. It's just enough. Um, it looks great fully applied. It looks great when you've been drinking out of, you know, a coffee cup or what have you and you it's a little bit blotted from whatever you've naturally been doing. It looks great. Um, you don't have to take it all off to reapply. Everything about this is easy and comfortable. My other thing that I really appreciate about this lipstick is it, although it is a cream lipstick, it's not really slippy and kind of greasy, it doesn't slide around, so it stays on my lips really well without feathering out into those fine lines around the edge of my lips. I am nearly 48, I'll be 48 next month, and I find that between, you know, pursing my lips, drinking from a straw, you know, living life in general, I find that those fine lines are starting to come through, and if things are too glossy, if things are too emollient, I do sometimes have color going out, not these guys. I love these lipsticks and these two shades in Baby and Lavenue have been fantastic. Another thing I fell in love with is this lip oil. This lip oil is just like, 
Another thing that lives in my scrubs pocket because it's sheer, it's lightweight, it's nourishing, and this shade, oh, I love this shade. And I didn't think I would because look, it's too orange. It's not too orange, it's fabulous. This right here is the shade Cara Cara, and compared to everything else, it really does look orangey, orange, orange, but this is fabulous. This is the sort of thing that I can put on my lips. Let me grab a mirror. And all of a sudden, my lips feel amazing. This is a little bit more on the oil side because it is like an actual lip oil, but I like that it's sheer enough that if it does start to kind of go outside of my lip lines, it never, it's not so deep that it's like these crazy lines. This doesn't stay exactly where you put it, but it is really moisturizing. And as it tends to get to the outside edge of my lip, it doesn't look crazy. And that can't be said about all other things, but I think a lot of it is because it's not too pigmented. And when I'm wearing it on my lips, you know, it's more like this. Um, I'll put a little bit on, then I'll smush my lips together. And if I just keep layering it on, it can get a little nuts. But when I wear it and it's like this, it's just fantastic. I had a really hard time choosing like which luxury lipsticks I wanted to share with you because there were so many great ones that I tried this year. A lot of them are from Lisa Eldridge. And if you don't already know this, Lisa makes my favorite lipstick formulas. She has three formulas. I adore them all. They're everything I want on a lipstick and then some. Like I didn't even know that that was a possibility until she started creating these beautiful formulas and beautiful nuanced colors. So these are the shades that were new this year that I purchased that I just can't stop reaching for. This summer, Lisa released more of her luxuriously lucent lipsticks. The luxuriously lucent formula is sheer, it's creamy, it's hydrating, has a little bit of shine to it. It's it's a, a beautiful, comfortable lipstick. And one of my favorite shades to wear always is a red lipstick. And I have been dying for this formula to have a red. The first red that she put out in this formula is kind of more like a coral orange shade. It's called Atomic Cherry, and I wanted like a red. And then she released this shade here in Palazzo. That has been amazing. Another one that I loved, this is kind of like my perfect blackened cherry. Um, the lipstick that I'm always kind of looking for, I had one that was almost exactly like this, sheer, lightweight, um, and, and it looks great when it's full force like this, but my favorite way to wear this shade here in Night Thoughts is when it's just a little bit worn in like this. This is great as a cheek color. This is great on the lips when it's blotted, when it's put on full force and you're wearing it like this. I love these Luxuriously Lucents, but the one that really blew my socks off that she released this summer is this one. This one's called Meet Me in Berlin. And she describes it as the sort of brown lipstick she wished she'd had in the 90s. This is what it looks like when it's swatched on fully. And this is what it looks like when it's kind of blotted in on the lip or you've been wearing it for a while and sips from your water bottle. Um, you know, you had some lunch and, and it, it just looks lived in. So fabulous. This is one that I had in my scrubs pocket all summer long, all through the fall. This has been a beautiful shade and a surprise because I am not a brown lipstick kind of gal. A lot of times they're too gray or they're too dark or they're too tan. This has been absolute perfection and all three of these shades are the ones that I have been in love with. Another lipstick she launched this summer that I was head over heels for is this. This is Strawberry Shock. This is an insanely saturated formula. So it is like crazy high pigment and it's demi matte. So I love a red lip, but this is a really fun red. It has a little dose of pink in there. Um, it is a red, but it has that pink in a way that it looks kind of like a, a shock of electric pink to the red. It is so fun, it is so wearable. And it's very different from the rest of her other matte formulas, the True Velvet. It has almost a powdery feel to it and not in a bad way but this is great when it looks like this it's also fantastic when it's fully fully on like straight from the bullet like all the color but I could not stop wearing this this summer I wore this so much it is the most beautiful 
an, a nuanced red because it's not like a, a deep dark red. It's not like a brick red. It's not like a candy apple red or a fire truck red. It's very different. And the fact that it has some of that pink in there really brings vibrancy to the face in a way that is bright and bold without being too much. And I know it looks like it'd be, it would be way too much, but she's a fun color. I have been loving Strawberry Shock. Lisa recently released uh, lipsticks in her holiday collection and the two True Velvets that I have been reaching for nonstop are probably not the ones I would have expected. Um, this is one that is just stunning. It's still sold out and it's so sad. It's such a shame, but this is Velvet Sorcery. This is again, a kind of brown leaning lipstick that I never expected to like. But what's beautiful about this lipstick is that when it's not on really heavy, you can see that there is some, almost like a little bit of rose to it. It's not too deep, it's not too dark. There's of course a lot of warmth in here, but there is also just a hint of kind of like a rose tone. So instead of going kind of caramel and brown, it goes a little bit, has a little hint of pink to it. And I'm not saying that it's a pink lipstick, but there is something in there, a little bit of mauve or a little bit of rose that makes this so beautiful and wearable on me. I love it so much. And I tend to wear it a little bit more like this than fully applied. The other one that I was like, well, I'll get it. It's probably not gonna be the one I reach for the most is this, this is Velvet Enchantment. Velvet Enchantment is described as kind of like her fairy tale red. It's a red lipstick, but it's a very wearable red. This right here is Velvet Enchantment. And what's great about this shade is that it, it is red, but it, it has a really nice balance of warm and cool tones to it. Um, this is the sort of red I would recommend for somebody who wants to wear a red lipstick, but isn't ready for something like this or something like this. This has definitely um, got a, a different overall look to it. It doesn't look like boom, like in your face red, it's not overpowering. It's so beautiful. This is the red lipstick <laughs> that my 14 year old keeps coming for and going, mom, I want this one. So I need to get one for her, but she really loves this. And I, I thought I was going to be wearing the deeper red a little bit more. Since these have arrived, I have not been able to put down Velvet Enchantment. The last lipstick I have to share with you is probably my favorite red of the year. And it's a new formula that YSL came out with this year and it's their bold lipstick line. This lipstick is crazy full pigment. And I love shade number one. They have this shade in so many different formulas. I have it in their Tatouage Couture liquid lipstick. I have it in their regular cream lipstick. I also have it in their Rouge Volupte Shine. I love this shade. And when I was like, ooh, I want shade number one in this new crazy pigmented and I was, so delighted, look at that, oh, I love it. The one thing that I like is that it, it is a shiny lipstick. When you put it on, it does have some shine to it. But look at that, I mean, it's, it's the most insane red. This is the red that my lipstick dreams are made of. Um, you can see the difference in the shades between all the reds here. Red is really my favorite shade to wear, but this lipstick right here is one that is surprising because you would think it's a cream lipstick. It's got a little bit of shine to it. Um, it's extremely pigmented. It's called, you know, their bold lipstick. Then it would be high maintenance. I don't find this to be a high maintenance lipstick. And to me, a high maintenance lipstick is one that, you know, maybe patches in the middle and you have to constantly reapply. High maintenance would be one that would feather out and I'd have these lines like going outside on those fine lines around my lips, kind of like trailing everywhere. High maintenance would be like if I get it anywhere outside of my uh, lip line, if I have to kind of brush it away, I'm going to end up not just disturbing the makeup underneath, maybe leaving a stain behind. And red lipsticks are notoriously high maintenance. This one is not. I love that Lisa's red lipsticks aren't high maintenance in my estimation, and neither is this one. And I would think it would be so high maintenance. It's not. It's so beautiful. It's so fabulous. I've been wearing red lipstick for more than three decades. And so I've really figured out how to wear it regularly and every day. It's not an occasional lipstick for me. It's a, red is my favorite shade. I wear it so, so, so much. So this has been one of my absolute favorites. This is where I would say if you have a shade that they make in this formula, 
that you wear all the time. It could be your daily lipstick. It's comfortable, it wears beautifully. Um, it feels really good going on. Like everything about it is just, I mean, it's so pretty. Luxurious, comfortable, all of those things. And very, very pigmented. I really like this lipstick. I am thinking about getting another one, but I have to make sure that I don't pick up another red. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was fun. I would love to know what products you tried for the first time this year. It doesn't have to be new, but just whatever you tried for the first time that was so good, you kept subconsciously reaching for it over and over and over again every time you did your makeup. Let me know in the comment section down below. And I will also leave a link to the previous video that's all about face and cheek products in that description box as well. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day, and I'll see you again soon.